Hey, Stacy David here with the Tales of a Gearhead podcast. Now, what is this? Well, it's a podcast that covers everything automotive, everything mechanical, everything that's just cool about the automotive lifestyle. And since that's just about everything, <laughs> you're going to love it. Today's podcast is brought to you by Skyjacker Suspension. Let's get rolling. You know, one of the questions that I get a lot is people are like, what? What's the very first thing that you did on TV? And the very first project that I did on TV was a, a TJ Jeep, and I put a Skyjacker suspension on it. Now, this was prior to trucks. This was actually the prototype or the, the pre-production pilots that we did of trucks. And um, that's how far back my relationship with Skyjacker goes. Matter of fact, it goes further back than that. When I was a kid growing up, if you wanted to put something cool on your Jeep, <laughs> it pretty much had to say Skyjacker on it. So today, I've got my buddy Lonnie McCurry, who is Mr. Skyjacker. We're going to talk about Skyjacker and how it got started. And guys, you're going to love this story because Lonnie is a character now. If you haven't met him, you're about to meet him. So, Lonnie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Stacy. Good to be here. And who do you got there with you? Miss Mallory Pike. Yeah, you got Mallory with you. Yes, sir. Hi. Mallory, it's great to have you as well. Thank you so much. All right, Lonnie, let's jump into this. Okay, how did you get started? Were you a hot rodder growing up, or were you always a four-wheel drive guy? Did you drive Camaros? What What's your background? A little bit of a hot rodder. Okay. Uh, and one, one thing led to something else, you know. I want to build stuff, you know, and take a English Ford uh, car and put running gear under it and all that kind of stuff. And I no, that ain't the way to do it. Oh, yeah. So I wound up with a four-cylinder Scout. And from there, we built suspension. And I thought, now, this just catch me out. You got four-wheel drive. Yeah. And didn't have no power. It runs 60 miles an hour down the highway when you <laughs> jacked it up. Put bigger tires. And that's flat on the floor, 60 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. Now you were you were running in the muds and the off road stuff at the time, correct? You were out trail riding and stuff. That's why you wanted the big tires, correct? So you were already That's into correct. that. You got to kind of lift it up to get over the get over the big ruts and get out of the water. Yeah. Then you got to put bigger tires on there, very aggressive tires. Yeah. So that that, that was just uh, that was something I really enjoyed was playing in the mud. I had no idea you started with a scout because I know that you have a fondness for those early Broncos. So did you go right into Broncos after that? After that, I went to a '73 Bronco, 302 standard shifts, jacked it up, big tires, and we even sealed it where you could run run it underwater. Oh yeah. <laughs> Before you come out with everything, you you know snorkel tubes and all that. Yeah. Our snorkel tube was was under the dash. Uh, it was special hose off the breather and all that kind of stuff. But it worked. It worked. Oh yeah. And so the mud bog and stuff was pretty popular down there in Louisiana, right? Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was. That was. If you didn't have a Bronco in those days or a jacked up truck, you were nobody if you wanted to go off road. Now were the Jeeps that popular as well? Uh, the, that was back in the CJ5 days we first started. Now, CJ5 was popular. I had a good friend that had one. Yeah. We'd done the same thing, changed the motor, intake, carburetor, and all that. But uh, and he, he done good. He done good. Uh-huh. Okay, so you had a four-wheel drive shop, correct? Uh, when we first started, we didn't in 73, but 74, we moved to town. Yes, we had a four-wheel drive shop. Opened up a four-wheel drive shop. Now, what was it called? Was it called Skyjacker then? Lonnie McCurry's Four-Wheel Drive Center Incorporated. Well, that, man, that sounds like a place you go get your Jeep worked on and you order some barbecue at the same time. <laughs> you got a chance. You got a chance to start at 8 o'clock and quit. Oh, you, you, if you was lucky, 11, 12 o'clock at night and then go home. Okay, so where did the Skyjacker name come from? When, when did you decide... Hey, I'm going to go into business building suspension components. Well, let's see. We started out building the lifts for the 73 Bronco. Okay. So from there, I guess Skyjacker was just the name we dreamed up. Like, okay, you're shooting for the sky. That sounds good. <laughs> Trying to get them up tall. <laughs> In those days, you know, you take a five, six inch lift on a Bronco with 35 tires uh, compared to an old four cylinder Jeep. That is tall. That is very tall, yeah. So that was just a dream of us. Uh, okay, look, let's try this. We'll call it Skyjacker. 
Okay, so this was the late seventies, right? When the when you started and Skyjacker was born as a company, correct? Seventy four when when Skyjacker was actually founded. From there, you know, you just just building stuff and modifying and uh-huh. trying to figure it all out. So here's the thing for you, you know, and you, and you're a very modest guy, which is very you know, very cool. But you have been kind of at the leading edge of this whole four-wheel drive phenomenon. How have you been able to do that? In other words, how did you stay on top of coming out with your kits? How do you do your engineering? I mean, how does Skyjacker stay relevant for 50 years? Well, Stacy, let me give you the ultimate, and th- this will be truthful, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I would expect nothing else from you, man. With the help of God Almighty, that we give him this company, yeah, he gives, he gives me some uh, sometimes some insight that I know is not mine. I have worked many a night till up to midnight at night and couldn't figure out something, and and just say, God, I need some help the next day. And if you built the whole world the way you wanted it, then I know you would give me the wisdom to get it done. I have come to work but within two hours. And I thought, there's what the problem is right there. And so solved the problem, and when we went. Well, I think for me to speak on just some things that I've heard in the early days, we have some a couple employees here that just hit 40 years this past this past year and our 50 year anniversary. So they literally were here in the early days. Skyjacker was built off of his initial passion. So he was in these vehicles. He was driving this and said, I really wish that this rode this way. So he would go take it back to the shop and figure out how to make it ride that way. And he wanted to come first in a race and be able to beat this next guy whose tires were a little smaller and whose lift was a little lower. And the next thing you know, they're having to go to town because he has seven cars lined up in a neighborhood down the street. And then he never was one that just sat behind a desk. And I think that that really made a difference. So your R&D was done out on the road and stuff like that. In other words, you, you didn't design things necessarily on a sketch pad or on a, I mean, you actually built them based on your knowledge of the way, the mechanics of the way things worked, correct? And your employees as well. That's correct. I noticed you guys have been involved in all of the racing and the events from day one. You know, when I first met you guys, you were right at the head of when the rock crawling thing was taken off. Oh, yes, sir. And you've continued to, to move forward in all the racing stuff. So tell me, why that's important to stay involved in the racing world, other than you know, you're a competitive guy yourself. You can gain a tremendous knowledge by keeping your eyes open, and just looking and watching. I know at one time, Monty Jr., boy of mine, we sponsored him in, in rock crawling. Well, every time there's no rocks out here in Louisiana, it's all mud. So when you, when you go out there, you okay, this didn't perform right. I'm watching it. I wasn't driving a ride, and I stood by and watched it where I could learn. You need to modify this. We need to make this a, a different. Mm-hmm. We come back and and do and rebuild it or, or modify it and go back out for the next run in three or four weeks. And do it again. Just just trial and error. And just be sure you finally get it modified the way you want it. And at that time, there, Stacy. Now you're ready to if you get once you perfect it. Now you're ready to turn it loose to the public. Because until then, it's just it's just a passion and a thought. You know, one of the things that that makes you guys really different too and that, that really kind of separates you from all of the other guys not all of the other but most of the other ones building aftermarket suspension is that skyjacker you guys would always go through all of the government testing and stuff to get your stuff approved to where it would be safe now tell tell people a little bit about what is involved in that and what it takes to get you know, your products, you know, approved to where you're not voiding a warranty or something. They call it FMVSS-126. Yeah. That's that's the federal government meaning behind stability track. In the later days, and that started in 17, uh, 2017, when it came out with stability track. Now, like I told some of the test drivers, when we carried to the track to get it tested, Said, I don't, I'm not sure if that right there, most everybody tries to fail on the first pass. And I said, well, ours not. That sounds braggadocious. I said, no, this is a fact. I said, it will pass in the first try. Why do you say that? I said, we drive them every day. And sure enough, it, it passed on the first test. So we have, we've tested several out there on the test track. 
at Ford's test track, enjoyed it. You learn a lot, but you need to do that to be sure you, you, the public is aware of the fact that it is a, it is a certified kit and has been tested, not just something you dreamed up. Yeah. So it's not just junk. It's not something that's going to get, that's going to kill you. Your driving a skill may kill you, but the kit, it's not going to kill you, right? <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. Because when you have a panic maneuver, and I've watched it, if when it goes into a panic maneuver, yeah. it better be right because they, they've got six foot outriggers all the way around it, big aluminum I beams with a wear pad on the bottom of it, keep them digging in for the asphalt just in case. Yeah. No, once they go through it, and the beautiful thing about it, Stacy, is it's a robot control. Once you once he clicks the button, then the steering wheel does him no good. He can't take control of it. So when, once he gets through this maneuver, going right and left in stability track, then he can recapture it. But until then, if he hits the button to capture it, it kills all of his test, and he got to start over again. So it's a it's, it's a real it's a real test. It's not no play joke. You know, I want to jump back into a little bit what Mallory was saying a little earlier um, about your employees. You know, you know how rare it is to have somebody you know with you for forty years, and you've got two or three of them. Yes, sir. Tell me about the importance of the people that that work there, and how much of a family thing it, it is. Because I know every time I run into you guys at SEMA. You know, you're very family oriented, not only with your immediate family, which we'll talk about here in a minute, but just uh, tell me about your employees and the way that you run your your business like that. Well, Stacy, to me, all of my key people are my family. I look at each one of them like they're almost kin. You know, as long as we all work, and we work together, and it's not like like Mallory said to me to go, I don't spend much time behind a desk. I'm out there designing just even today. So it's been 50 years of design, and we still do it every day. But the the family's out there with me, family being all my key people. They enjoy the accomplishments of when your task is well done. And when you get through, you go down the highway and say, man, this, this, this is really good. So you feel good about selling that kind of merchandise. Uh-huh. Just got to have good quality people, and that's hard to get now. Yeah, they're the most valuable asset out there. Uh, yes, sir. Mallory, I want to get your take on this because you're third generation, aren't you? Yes. Okay, let's talk about that a little bit. How was it growing up in the Skyjacker family? <laughs> I was on a little bit different of a path. I actually had my own business and kind of did my own thing. Yeah. Um, and then an opportunity came for a marketing position, um, mm-hmm. and that's my true passion, which now has bled over into Skyjacker. Um, so I kind, of, I kind of get the best of both worlds. I grew up around all of these people in the industry, but it was never my true passion. I always wanted to do my own thing. Sure, not, in sure. ugly, not in an ugly way, but just I was just raised that way with a good work ethic. Absolutely. Um, I can say this. The people here, aside from, you know, what Popo and Momo did in those early days, and I feel like her business mind and marketing mind and his drive and his fabrication abilities. Yeah. Um, obviously we're the key to making Skyjacker what it is, but man, our employees are just top notch. Really. I have like 20 extra uncles up here. Um, (laughs) and a lot of people have asked me how it is coming into an industry, you know, a mostly male industry. So green and young. And I told them that it wasn't an issue for me because for one, I already had the respect of the industry with, being a part of Skyjacker, but I also, anytime we go anywhere, I'm literally the only female with like 20 dudes around me, yeah. <laughs> like walking everywhere. Well, but they all also are willing to teach me. They yeah. have since I got here. I've learned so much from our employees here. They have not ever once not sat down and explained something to me if I need it. So we really are blessed with some incredible people up here. That's fantastic. I'll tell you what, Lonnie, and I want to talk about somebody else very special. Let's talk about Nell. I was just fixing to mention, Stacey, want to go, I guess, because she's not sitting here. Yeah. Uh, she's in another place in, in office here. Without her, I don't believe I could ever make it. We had a we had a deal at one time. I told her, I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, sugar. I'll do my best to make it, and you do your best to keep it. <laughs> I didn't. I haven't ever looked back. So without her, it would have been. All, I think it'd been impossible for me to. I couldn't work those kind of hours. Okay. First of all, how many years have you been married to Nell? Well, let's see. Come uh, this coming October the second, be fifty nine years. 
Gosh, congratulations, man. Thank you, sir. That is so rare. And you've been in business together. Most people are like, you're insane. That's impossible. You know, Catherine and I are in business together. And it's rare for a husband and wife to be able to do that. So tell everybody out there they want to know your secret. First of all, of being married that long. Second of all, of being a successful business owner. Can I answer one question about that first? Absolutely. I can tell you right now, she might be five foot three, but she's as tough as he is. Oh, absolutely. And so for him to have his mind be as sharp as it is on that side, when I looked back through when we got ready to celebrate 50 years for Skyjacker and we looked through because they kept everything, which was wonderful for us. Nowadays, you know, we have it so easy in the marketing department. Everything's digitally, you know, created. And yeah. she had the hand drawings and this everything measured and scaled and the way that she's been able to truly invest in the money and marketing side of the company. It definitely took both of them. Yeah. In that for each of their strengths to be able to bring it all together. It's it's tough, Stacy, to be in business this long with a husband and wife team because you're gonna run into a lot of conflicts. Sure. You know, you want this way, I want that way. And finally somewhere in the middle of it you gotta compromise and still go home and be a husband and wife outside of business. She would be she would probably speak a little bit blunt than what I would on that and say it's hard, harder than what I I said, but without her I couldn't have made it. You know, if you're into trucks or SUVs, and most people are, there's basically three schools of thought here. You leave it stock and don't touch it, which is the boring way to go. (laughs) Or you slam it down on the ground and lower it, which is more of a street version. Or there's the lifted four-wheel drive thing. And if you're into lifted four-wheel drive vehicles, especially trucks, but also SUVs, well, then you've probably heard of Skyjacker suspension. They've been around since the mid-70s. And they have been doing suspension right, bolt-on suspensions that you can put on your vehicle and drive safely down the road. I mean, they've got things that are just two-inch lifts, you know, four-inch lift, six inches lift of lift, all up to crazy stuff. So if you are into lifting a vehicle and you want a nice bolt-on suspension, check out Skyjacker Suspension. I've been doing stuff with them forever, and they're a great company with some great products. Of course, you've always won awards for um, for your products and stuff, like at SEMA, and we'll talk about that a little bit here in a second. But now, you know, people look at it and they're kind of like, "Well, there's, you know, there's Lonnie and there's Skyjacker. I mean, they're legends. They've been around forever. They're like, of course." And they don't realize that there was a time that you started with virtually nothing and you worked your tail off. I try to get that across to people when they start building a project or they start a business of their own. You know, they get out there and they start working on a car and they don't realize that it seems easy right now, but there is a journey ahead of them that they're going to have to persevere through. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so what is your advice to somebody like that starting out, you know, and, and something like that? What is the sage advice that you could give them? Oh. That's been so long ago when I, till I got started, Stacy. And most people are like, don't do what I did. <laughs> do everything different. But it's trial and error. Trial and error. You cannot get yeah. disgruntled or disheartened if something don't work. You have to have the tenacity to keep pushing and keep yeah. pushing and keep pushing. Here's, here's the same thing I told my son when he graduated from college in marketing when he wanted to come in. He made the decision he wanted to come to Skyjack. I said, son... Let me tell you now that I love you and I appreciate you, but now when you walk into the office in marketing, don't get your feelings hurt when I say I don't like what you've done. Do it a different way. He said, I can live with that, Daddy. I said, okay. So he's been here now, which he's president of the company and does a tremendous job, tremendous job. So we've talked about family a little bit here, and you mentioned you mentioned faith here a little early before. You know, one thing that's very unique about Skyjacker, every Skyjacker package you open up, there's this Jesus Rocks thing that is laying in there. Tell me about your conviction on that and why that's important. Stacy, one time in life, when this company was very young, very young, me and the wife drove in on a concrete and I parked at the gate. 
It's still the same place today. And I, we held hands in the car and prayed over it and said, God, I will give you this company and honor you. And I will do my best to be a witness for you. And you, it'll grow just as big as you want it. Or if you want to, if you don't want, if you want to fail, I'll ride it to the end. So that was a commitment we made. And I made a commitment to him that in all the boxes we send out, it's going to be a literature review on salvation. I've had big boys, big boys call me before and say, uh, Lonnie, yeah, I don't like that all that literature you put in the, in those packages. I want you to stop it. And here's what I tell them. I made a higher commitment to somebody that we both need to have a commitment to. I've, I said I would do it, and I will not refuse to do it for you yeah. or nobody else. So I am going to do it, period. That's what this company stands for, and that's the blessings that we've seen, received from him. I love it. Stacy. I graduated from high school, and that is my edu formal education. And to be able to design what I've been blessed to design, I, I think it's impossible for ordinary just college, I mean, high school graduate. If I'd had an engineering degree, I could have blamed it on it. <laughs> but I don't. I have a high school education, yeah. and that's it. So I've, I've enjoyed what little success God's given me, and I've enjoyed it. Yes, he gave the company to God, and I do believe God blessed him and my mom sure. for, for that. But you will not be able to outwork him. <laughs> he just has he's been built that way, and he never slowed up on that. And my mom's the same way. Um, first one in, last one out still, but you have to be willing to know that you have to make up your mind on something and that's where your mind's going to be at, no matter yeah. what gets in the way. They had a goal to give it to the Lord from the get go. And it didn't matter what came in between throughout these last 50 years. It never wavered in their faith or their, or their work ethic. Great point, Mallory. I'm glad you brought that up because you can't just have one without the other. You can't just sit on the couch and go, okay, Lord, you know, you're going to take care of this. You know, he says, okay, now you got to get up and get to work. And I'm going to guide you, exactly. but I can't do it while you're sitting on the couch. That's really one of the reasons I wanted, you know, you guys to elaborate on this because there's a lot that goes into that. And it's, there's a lot about the success of Skyjacker that people need to take a look at from all aspects. And I just think it's wonderful. All right, so the big question is, okay, you're involved in all these racing things now. What is the, what is the future for Skyjacker? I mean, it, it, what, what do you plan to do with this company? Uh, is it going to continue? I mean, I know you're digging into, you know, current vehicles coming out and, you know, the new Broncos and things like that. Are you, you know, what, what are you planning? What are you doing? We're going to continue to design what we've, the way we've done it for the last uh, last mm -hmm. almost 50 years. Uh, there again, that's what I really enjoy doing, and I've, I've surrounded the team with me. We've just finished building a new R&D complex with a lot of lifts in it. For an example, it goes all the way back to 1980 when Ford came out with independent four-wheel drive, and then it begins to evolve and evolve, and it's like, well, nobody ever seen this before. Now, what do we do now? Here's what I like to tell people. They said, well, how hard is that to put on? I said, there's nothing hard. But just It takes longer to put this one on, this kit on, than does this other kit. Once you conquer one of them, then it becomes easy. Are, are there any markets out there that, that you see or like an up-and-coming market? Uh, I mean, is it like the SUV market coming up? You know, or is there, you know, pickup trucks are hot right now. Do you see something on the horizon that you think might be a big market for you guys? I think that we've always had a really broad application we don't just you know we're not just jeep we're yeah. not just truck one thing we have tried to do is really get involved with that cross over market you know super oh, and things like that that's one thing i want to touch on also is one reason skyjacker has been successful is because they've functioned for almost 50 years with absolute zero debt if they didn't have it, they didn't do it. They were able to pay as they went. And that's how they expanded into a two bay shop on this property to now over 85,000 square foot facility. I think Sean Holman said it best. It's like a um, Frankenstein mm -hmm. building where everything's in weird <laughs> Yeah, you pieces. just add on, yeah. Yeah, so everything's laid out in random places. Since COVID, especially, when we went from wholesale only to all of a sudden 300 small packages a day, um, our facility is not in 
line. And so that's the big push that we're, we're going to have towards the end of this year is getting everything in one warehouse and one proper functioning, you know, route. So I think that that's going to help tremendously on just internal things for Skyjacker. We've literally, we never take anything off the shelf. We've manually done so many things for all these years. I think that if people come to the facility, when they see the facility and they hear how we do things, they're honestly shocked the amount of business and, you know, the amount of stuff that we've been able to do how we do it. Yes. And I've noticed with the popularity of like the CJs are now collector's items. And they're bringing they're bringing big money yes, at auctions, and so were the square body Chevy trucks, and all this stuff. And you know what they want on them? They want Skyjacker suspensions on them. So there's a whole a whole market coming back around. We don't get rid of anything. We're one of the only ones that still have yeah. parts. We're actually continually yeah. redoing them for you know the better purpose and functionality. Yeah. I took my little red wagon truck that I did one of your Skyjacker lifts almost 20 years ago on, on trucks. And I put almost 200,000 miles on that truck over the years, beating the tar out of this thing. And now we're, I'm, I'm restoring the truck. And I, I walked the viewers through the suspension. Now, at this point, most of your aftermarket stuff, I've been through two superchargers on that thing, two or three engines, a different transmissions. You know, it's typical, whether it's aftermarket parts, two or three exhaust systems, different sets of headers. You know, the one thing I've never had to change is the Skyjacker lift. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> the only reason, yeah, I'm, I'm upgrading it because I want it to look good because I'm repainting the truck. It's going to look good. And, you know, there's there's rust on there and there's, there's some of the powder coating is chipped off and you've changed some of the colors and this kind of thing. But as far as the lift, it hasn't sagged. Nothing is broken. None of the brackets are broken. The welds are solid. And I want people... To see that, you know, when when I try to get people to invest in aftermarket parts, I'm trying to get them to invest in something that I think is superior to OEM. And there's not a lot of companies that you can say that about. And Skyjacker is one, you know. And I just, it's it's really a great thing. And that's that's part of what I wanted to do here is show people what goes into that and what makes your product so good. Yeah, that's really great. I appreciate that, Stacey. One of the things that we were really able to stay true to was, you know, it was from the U.S. We shock peened not just the top layer, every layer in between. You know, so quality for him has been his number one goal since the beginning, and he's stayed true to that. Yeah, I tell you what, and you guys have always had an eye toward the guy that was doing it himself. I remember early, early on, I think it was Lonnie Jr. I was walking around one of the kits and at early, early kits, you would just get a, a bag of hardware. And I remember talking to Lonnie going, man, it sure would be great if this hardware was broken down in, you know, to where like the hardware to the leaf springs was in its own package and this kind of thing. And, you know, we talked about that and you guys started doing that, I think before anybody. And oh my gosh, when it comes to installing, especially a big kit, when you don't have to dig through all the hardware and separate it, <laughs> you just saved yourself hours. Especially, you know, back then, a lot of the people that were doing it had a, had a mechanical background. A lot of the people that are getting into cars now don't have that mechanical background. So you got you to gotta make it easier for them. Well, anyway, guys, this has been a pleasure. I tell you what, anytime you're around, please drop by. We'll put you back on. I'm looking forward to having you guys drop by here at the new shop. We appreciate it so much, Stacy. All Stacey. right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Stacy. All right. That's our show for today, which means you need to get out there and start working on something. Spend some time turning wrenches. You might be surprised how much you like it. Make sure you check out our website, stacydavid.com, because we've got all kinds of new products and some other great stuff that you're just going to love. Also, make sure to check out our social media. That's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all at official Stacy David. Our social media is where you're going to find all of the bonus content, the giveaways, the contests, the trivia. We even have extra viewer projects that focus on what you are working on. Also, the new season of Gears will be on MAV TV, and YouTube will be the place that you can view all of your favorite Gears episodes, as well as the full project builds 
that follow the project from beginning to end. Make sure to check out our new Gears Coffee Cars. This is a unique blend of coffee and cool stickers to collect that will appeal to anyone. But the most important thing is get out there and turn some wrenches yourself. All right, that's all the announcements. We're all up to date. We'll see you next time.